Is State of Decay 2 the game for you? Hey, what's up guys, Irish Turtle here, and in today's video, I kind of want to discuss with you guys my thoughts on what type of people State of Decay 2 is aimed at, and what sort of players uh, are the types of people who, you know, Undead Labs were kind of pitching their game towards. Um, so I kind of want to go through that in this video, talk to you guys about what State of Decay is, as well as what it isn't, so that hopefully by the end of this video, you can kind of try and make a bit of an informed decision as to whether or not you know you'd want to buy this game and play it for a, for like you know a, upwards of 10 hours, 20 hours, and you know you want to try and play it. So let's just sort sort of like go out straight at the gate, right? The game itself is costing around £25, I think you're looking at $30 in America, and that's pretty much an indie price for the game, if, if you sort of understand pricing of games, that's an indie price. So a lot of people have said because of that, they don't think the game has had a lot of development, and I kind of want to point out to you guys, this has been funded by Microsoft. The reason that the price is so low is because Undead Labs have quite a good connection with their community and their fans, and they want to say, hey, look, the game is still basically State of Decay 2, uh, sorry, State of Decay 1, but we took all the things that you liked and we put them into the new game and got rid of the stuff you didn't like, and that's the game we have for you now. And that's one of the reasons the price is so low, is because they're, you know, they're saying, this is a game for you guys, our fans. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. So they're kind of trying to like add that as a fan service with the price. Now, the game itself is primarily an open world survival game. As far as it's concerned, it doesn't try and like kind of present itself as this 30 to 40 hour story campaign where you know you explore the world and go through to scripted events so think kind of like just cause you know where you're exploring the world you go to an objective and you start this scripted mission and you follow through on all these kind of quests State of Decay 2 isn't like that the game will present you with things that you can do as sort of like missions or pseudo missions that you can turn up to and say hey I'm gonna help these people hey I'm gonna do this activity whatever it is uh, be it clearing out an infestation, taking out a horde, you know, helping a group of ref like refugee survivors by giving them food, helping them, whatever, or, you know, going to kill a group of hostile survivors. The point is, the game doesn't force you into these cinematic moments with the way the gameplay works. It simply goes, hey, here's something you can do, here's something you might need to deal with, you go do what you want with it. We're not going to tell you how to do it, we're not going to script it, it's just going to happen. And that's the way that, you know, the game has been designed. It's it's not focusing on this story like sort of arc and story loop that a lot of people are looking for. So when I've seen a couple of the reviews talk about State of Decay 2, they say we're not really impressed because you sort of you you get a base, you go and get supplies, and that's kind of it. That's the loop of the game. You get a base, you build it up, you get supplies, and that's really it. Except that's not what the game is pitched at. Because these kind of reviewers, they'll sit there and they're looking for a specific type of game, whereas State of Decay 2 is a different thing entirely to what they're expecting. As I said, it is this survival-based game. It's not like DayZ, where you have one survivor, you go out, you get gear, you take on zombies, you take on other players, and then you die, and that's it, you start again. State of Decay 2 is almost more like like a Walking Dead simulator sort of style of game. When you jump into the world, you have a group of survivors that you have to try and keep alive. You settle yourselves into a base or a community area, and you build up and you get the supplies and you manage and balance all of the resources that you have at your disposal to keep this group of community members alive. If one of the members of the community that you're playing as goes out and dies, that isn't game over. You don't just start again. You actually then go on to like use the other characters in your community because they're still alive and you know they'll sort of react to the death of that character who's died you know they'll be sadder there'll be less morale in your camp and like i said it's similar to how the walking dead is structured as a tv series or as a comic you have this group of survivors they work together to keep themselves alive and they deal with threats and problems as they come and that's basically what state of decay 2 is it's essentially pitched to those people that love the idea of trying to survive an apocalypse love the idea that hey, one day everything's just going to go to shit, everything's going to crash, be it, you know, an apocalypse, be it a zombie outbreak, be it nuclear fallout, what have you. Eventually something like that is going to happen. And the game is based around the people like that. That's the kind of audience that's aiming to try and encapsulate with the way it's developed and the way it's played. 
So, you know, if you're a fan of su survival games where you have to keep a group of people alive, there's sort of sim sort of management style stuff to it with regards to resources, then this is definitely a game that you might be interested in because that's kind of the way it works. You have this third person story element, but you also have this base building and management system along with having to manage character traits, character abilities. You know, it's all that kind of stuff there from like a, from like a survival game also rolled up into this zombie zombie sort of killing game and also almost an RPG game as well with how the skill systems in the game work. So it's, it's again, it's tapered for those people that want that type of gameplay. As I said, if you're looking for a game with 30 to 40 hours of really deep sort of story driven content where the game holds your hand and says, hey, look, let's get you from point A to point Z and we're going to just sort of hold your hand the entire way you're not going to get that. You shouldn't really buy this game if that's what you're looking for. But if you're the type of person that likes to you know, survive, try and see how long you can keep groups of people alive for, how people interact, that sort of stuff, then State of Decay 2 might be worth a look, just because, you know, that's, as I said, what they're sort of aiming to try and get across with this game. But, you know, that's just my brief opinion as to who State of Decay 2 is for and what the sort of stuff it offers within its sort of confines of the game. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below, guys. Do you do you think I've got it kind of right about who they're aiming for or do you think I'm completely wrong? As I said, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Obviously, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit that like button. Subscribe for more State of Decay 2 content coming soon and I'll see you in the next one.